Hey guys, welcome to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. I hope you are having a good Tuesday. I hope you're having a good Tuesday afternoon. Whenever it is that you're actually watching this, I uh, hope you are okay. Obviously, this is the Frank Veros preview ahead of Thursday late afternoon, early evening game uh, in the Europa League. So we'll be talking about the game. You talk about some stuff that I, I kind of mentioned yesterday in a video Look when I did the look ahead to this game as well as the Brighton game. So we're talking about some of the stuff I talked about there. Thoughts, feelings, team, all that sort of stuff. Just want to say, if you're watching this and you're new, subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. And I will apologise now. As you can see, right underneath me is a new mic. I don't know how good it is, if I'm honest. I don't know audio levels, where it should be and things like that. So if it is a bit, if it's a bit quiet, can you let me know? If it's a bit too loud, let me know. Something in the middle, tell me, obviously. And I can adjust it for future videos. But this is sort of the guinea pig test run, all right? Test run. So... Let me know. Regardless if it's great, let me know. If it needs work, let me know. But yeah, let's talk about Frank Rose. Obviously, this game um, is the second game of our Europa League run. Obviously, having played Carabag last time out last Thursday, it's, it feels weird that's already already a, a week ago, you know. So looking at um, looking at us right now in the Europa League, we're sitting in fourth. So we're actually one place ahead of Galatasaray. And two places ahead of Rangers, who are two teams that we play in this tournament. And I talked about how, you know, with this Europa League style in now, it's all about not only winning games, but it's by how many. You know, if you're going to lose games, by how many? And it, it gives you sort of an impetus to go out and try, go out and get more. If you tune them up, go and get a third. If you three not, go and get a fourth. You know, if you're holding on, all guns blaze and hold on to what you've got, you know, that kind of vibe. And when we, when we played Carabag, we went one, uh, we went down to 10 men. It was obviously for me, it was like, can we just get a win? The fact that we won and we won by three, fantastic. Now, yes, people were worried about the performance, but again, you're down to 10 men. Are you really expecting us to go out there and hit them for seven, eight, you know, concede no chances? You should, con you should expect to concede chances, regardless of who you're playing, if you're down to 10 men. Now, obviously winning three nil, sets us up in a really great position. You know, when we now look at the Frank Varos game, if we can come into this game, win again, if you win, let's say, by a couple, there's probably a really good chance that you're going to be sitting top at the end of match day two in the Europa League. Um, when we look at the fixtures post this game as well, um, just bring it up here. Obviously, like I said, we're going to be playing Galatasaray and Rangers coming up, but the next game is on the 24th of October against AZ Alkmaar. Obviously, the Troy Parrot return. Then we do go to Galatasaray on the 7th of November, play Roma at the end of the month on the 28th of November. So those are the next sort of three games after Frank Raos. And, you know, if you win the Frank Raos game, you beat AZ Alkmaar, you go into those two games, which you might say are the two of the more tougher games of the eight that we have, you'd be sitting there going in with a lot more confidence. You know, if you get a draw away to a Galatasaray, that ends up being a solid draw. If you, if you, you know, beat Roma, you're sitting there after match day five, four wins and a draw, which isn't unrealistic to ask for. You know, if you, if you go, if you go in with four wins and a loss, it's again, how many do you lose by? So as long as if you lose by one, it really isn't the end of the world. Because if you make up the other end by winning the other games, by winning a lot, that's the key thing here. So when we talk about Frank Varos, obviously Hungarian team, I talked about how they were topping their league. They've got six win from six, having scored 12 and conceded two. So scoring two a game, they're conceding 0.33 a game. You know, goal difference of 10, already three points clear in their league with a game in hand against uh, Puskas Academia, who I believe they played actually last time out. They did. They won 3-0. Mateus Saldanha scored a hat-trick for them. And so look, they're in unbelievable form. Now, yes, they lost 2-1 away to Anderlecht in their first game of the Europa League. So obviously wanting to come into this game, wanting to pick up at least a point because actually, again, you don't want to start falling behind these other teams who have got four points or six points or even three points, to be fair. So they're going to come into this game wanting to obviously get points out of it. Now, again, we win this game, we go top. And technically, I think if we draw this game, we'll go top just because we play ahead of the eight o'clock games. But if we win this game, you go top, you can kind of kick backs and enjoy the sort of the eight o'clocks and see what happens from there. Right now, Spurs obviously having a gap between other teams that maybe you expect to be quite good in the Europa League. That's a key thing. Um, I wonder, I brought in this in, a, in, a, in, a, in the look ahead to the Frank Rouse game. And I was talking about their manager. And the reason why I talked about their manager 
uh, Pascal Janssen is because he's actually had a lot of interest from England. He's had interest from uh, Rangers. He's had interest from uh, Sunderland. He used to be the AZ Alkmaar coach. And I, I sort of looked at the the sort of lowdown onto who he is as a person and what makes him so good and what have you. And they sort of said that uh, Pascal Janssen sets his team up in a standard Dutch style 4-3-3. Sometimes it plays slash looks more than a 4-2-3-1 though. One thing that could be an, an issue for him is the players available. He likes wingers to invert and play inside while fullbacks overlap. So when we talk about Spurs and how you might see the Destinies and the Poros underlap a lot more, he's more of an overlap. So they would play a similar formation, but they just change sometimes how their fullbacks play. Obviously, a lot of times recently, you've actually seen our fullbacks go on the outside and attack down the wings, which has been a bit different. Other, th I think teams have actually struggled a little bit that with that with us, with you know the Poros going on and, and whipping crosses in, and, and Destiny obviously getting forward the way he does. So in this game, obviously knowing that Destiny, I think won't be playing. Obviously went off at halftime against Man United as a precaution. You would have to say Ben Davies is going to be at left back. I think that would probably end up being quite a safe shout. I'm going to come to the team in a minute anyway. So looking at it, they like to get on the ball. They like to create. One thing I did also notice when I was looking at some of their stats, because you can go on um, the UEFA.com and you can see the stats of players, uh, teams and things like that. They had 41% possession in their first game against Anderlecht with an 82% passing accuracy. Um, looking at when they were uh, attacking, they had nine total attempts at goal. Um, they did score. It was inside the area, but they had three attempts on target, one off target and five blocked. Uh, according to their distribution of their possession, um, they they had, uh, they, sorry, the 22 crosses in the game. So you're looking at a team that they do put in quite a few crosses. So something to keep an eye on. They only actually ended up having one of those on target in terms of a player actually getting on the end of one of their crosses. So looking at this, one thing I would say is they're going to be wanting to put in a lot, a lot of crosses into the box. And I would say, obviously, Dragon missing this game due to the suspension of the red card against Carabag. You're probably going to end up seeing Mickey and Romero in this game. OK, so this season with Mo uh, Nick Montgomery becoming more of sort of the defensive and offensive coach of set pieces, we have improved. That's a fact. We all know it's a fact. Yes, we could be still be a little bit nervous, but we have improved a lot on it. Stats back it up. Don't want to hear it. This is going to be a game where you're probably going to have to be aware of the fact that they're going to want to whip in a lot of crosses. Now, Spurs obviously probably going to have the majority of the possession, you know, sort of 65 percent, somewhere around there. What you do with it, obviously, being a key thing. Them with themselves, they're probably going to counter-attack with a lot of pace. The one other thing as well is their disciplinary. They got six other cards against Andelect. They committed 25 fouls, which is an absurd amount of fouls. There was 37 in the game, by the way, so it was a proper scrappy game. But 25 fouls committed. When you look at some of our players, you'll probably find they're going to pick up a few fouls in terms of Basuma winning a few fouls. Uh, you could probably say... Um, Bergvall is probably going to pick, pick, pick up a few fouls. So something to keep an eye on with themselves. You know, looking at Frank Varos, I'm not going to sit here and say that I know a ton about their team, but that was just some key stuff from that. For Spurs, obviously, like I said, win the game, can sort of kick back, relax a little bit more. Uh, in terms of what I expect from the team, obviously, I think you'll probably see Vic in goal, to be honest. Um, you'll probably say Davies at left back, Mickey Kuti at centre half, right back, Probably Archie Gray again. And I think, by the way, a lot of people complain, you know, I want to see him in the midfield. I want to see this, that, and the other. For me, I just want him to see him get minutes. If that's at right back or if that's at centre mid, fine. Just get him minutes. And the fact he played 90 minutes in his Carabag with 10 men, by the way, he was part of the 10 men that played, I think is great experience. European game, down to 10 men. It's your first one as well. So much experience to gain from that and learn from that. So I think with Archie Gray, I think he'll be at the right back position. I think the midfield three, Suma, Saar, Bergval. I think, you know, that was the three that started against Karabag. Obviously, Bergval had to come off early due to the red card, but I think that would be the midfield three. In terms of the front three, it's an interesting one because ideally, we'd like Solanke to get some, some rest. I don't think Son's going to be playing in this one as well. Get, I'd rather him not play as well. Just let him get a rest, get a week off. Let him come back for Brighton at the weekend on Sunday, having had what, 10 days recovery? 
It wasn't a big injury that he suffered, but if he can come back for that game, that's where I want him for. I think we've got enough to get past this team without needing him. Um, so you'd probably say Vern is going to start on the left. I think that would be a safe shout. Will they go the slanky route? I think they have to. Will Richie be back fit on the bench? I don't think so, but I don't think he's far off. But I could kind of see him being back after the international break, letting him just sort of get his fitness back, come back, feeling quite fresh, feeling quite fit. Obviously, for West Ham is the first time back at home. And then I think on the right wing, I think you'll probably find Johnson again. Um, I know obviously a lot of people want to see Mikey Moore and what have you. Um, and I would say Mikey Moore is going to be in the squad and he's going to be on the bench. I think Lankshire will be on the bench as well. But the thing is, you know, you're still getting great minutes from for Archie Gray. Bergval, hopefully, as long as no one decides to go and get themselves a red card, is going to get 90 minutes, hopefully, as well. Which, again, for a player that's come from the Swedish league, he's, I know it's been a bit stop-start, but this is good minutes. You know, if we can get him 60 minutes to 90 minutes here and there with this sporad sort of sporadic 15, 20 minutes, I think that's great. I think it's just that, that learning, I think, will be incredible. So I think that'll be my team. Like I said, I'll repeat, Vic in goal. I think Davies at left back. Mickey, Cootie at centre half with Gray at right back. I think your midfield three will be Basuma, Saar, Bergval. And then I think your front three from left to right will be Werner, Solanke, Johnson. Again, Solanke and Johnson continue to build that sort of rapport. Oh, slap my mic. Uh, continue to build their rapport and learn from one another. And I think Mikey Moore will come on, hopefully, as long as the game is out of... Out of um, out of contention, he's going to come on and get 15, 20, half an hour, which again, in Europe, great experience. He is only 17. I know a lot of people look at Lamina Mal, but that was out of forced nature. Let's get Mikey half an hour here and there. Let's let him sort of, sort of come into the team nice and easy. Towards the end of the season where you start to see him for 60 minutes, 70 minutes here and there, it's good development. Let's not rush it. The goods will come. Let's not rush it. Uh, in terms of what I think for the scoreline, for me, I'm going to go 2-0 Spurs. I think 2-0 Spurs... Um, looking at it, I think this is an interesting team. I don't think it's a team that look, we shouldn't be losing this game. We just go in there, 2 0, another clean sheet. Double on the uh, that's, that'll be three on the bounce, which I'm not going to complain about. Three clean sheets on the bounce, having scored eight in that time, you'd be happy with that, especially with one of those games being you went down to 10 men. The other one was away at Man United as well. Obviously, yes, I know they went down to 10 men. Regardless, eight goals scored. Zero goals conceded in an eight in a three game spell. No matter what it is, the spell that's great. The fact that you can go back even further and back yourself up that we've conceded two in five, and you want to add in if as long as Frank Varos goes the way that I expect with the two nil, you could sit there and say actually we scored thirteen and five with two conceded, which is amazing. So for people that you know, oh defense this, defense that, there's some stats to show that you are being backed up on that. So let me know your thoughts, feelings about the team, what you expect from the game, your scoreline, all those things that we will talk about in our previews. Obviously, I know I normally do these live. Just a little bit busy at the moment. I'm recording FIFA. I'm recording all the gameplay for the co the, the channel coming out. There is going to be a members-only video coming out, looking at some stats and figures. I'm going to do them quite frequently on individual players and the benefits and things like that. So look out for that if you are a member. If you want to join, press join down below. You know how to do all those things. I'm sure you're capable. Obviously, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for joining me. Obviously, like the video. Comment down below your thoughts and feelings about the game. Obviously, subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. Anyway, guys, end of the video. I'll speak to you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.